I think it's probably about time I retired off this hand-painted background, but for today, for this shoot, yeah, that's going to be perfect. Hello, I'm Gavin Howie, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to have a look at doing your very first warm, flat portrait session. What does that mean? Well, warm means colors that are a little warmer than usual, and flat, well, I'm not going to have any real shadows or highlights in my final pictures. The way I do that is going to vary depending on whether I have a light or dark background, so I'm going to do the whole shoot twice with the different looks. Most of the work is going to come with the lighting, so we'll cover that in detail, but there will be a bit of post-processing, and I'll take you through that too. So where am I going to start? Let's start, let's start with the light colour background, which means I've got to get all this out of the way. So whilst I'm doing that, you should click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss a video right here on Adorama TV. I think I need to wind this back up again. Let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. Why did I do this first? To help me out today, I've got the amazing Chloe. Chloe is going to be the model for this shoot, and our first look is going to be a white wall, almost a high key type environment. But before we get to any of the lighting or any of the camera settings, it's important that I get control of the room lights. So I'm in manual mode, I'm at f5.6, 200 ISO, native ISO for my Olympus camera, 250th of a second. I'm not going to change those settings throughout this shoot, but let's see what we get without any flash firing. No flash, no picture. We have control of the room lights. I'm going to set my camera up to mirror how my final picture might be. So here in the camera, I'm actually going to choose, well, not the auto white balance. I'm going to go with a custom white balance and 7000K looks about right. I'm also going to reduce the contrast down a little bit. So we'll take that down. And whilst I'm going, we might as well take the saturation down because these are similar changes to the images I'm going to make in post-production. But of course, because I'm shooting in RAW, I have a lot more control in Photoshop. Next, it's the exposure. And this is actually really important because to see any color and tone, we need to have mid-tones in the image. So let's see what we're getting, first of all. So I'm just gonna take a little meter reading. Here we go, Chloe, which is giving me f5.6. That's what I'm shooting. But I'm actually gonna take the uh, metering down by two thirds of a stop. Hopefully, yeah, f4.5. So that's two thirds of a stop underexposed. Remember, exposure meters are there to give you a guide. They're not necessarily an accurate must use setting. So this should give us something a little bit dark, but perfectly okay. Good as that is, I think it would look better with a, a heavier shadow around the edge, more vignetting, because we're gonna fill the shadows in with a second light. So I've added a grid to this to, to try and give that heavier vignette look. Now the grid will take away a little bit of light, so it's important I re-meter to make sure that that is still coming out at f4.5. Okay, let's see what we're getting, here we go. No, it's coming out at f2.8, so I need to increase my exposure just a little bit to get back to f4.5. Okay, so that's the correct exposure again. Let's just take a shot and see how it looks with just that one light and the grid. Yeah, and now we have a definitely more defined shadow and vignette in this shot. This is a Flashpoint Explore 300. Its job is to bounce light all around my room and fill in the shadows. So I'm pointing it at the biggest light modifier I own, which is the ceiling of my small home studio. So that's gonna go up there somewhere. I want this light to be two stops less than I'm shooting. So I'm shooting at f5.6, can you do the maths? f2.8 is where we're aiming for. So I've turned the key light off. Let's see what we're gonna get with the fill light and it looks really flat. But what we're looking at effectively is the shadows. This is the illumination I'm gonna get in the shadow parts of our photo. And that is pretty good. And when we combine it with the shot with the key light on, you can get an idea for how our final pitch is going to look. This lighting setup actually didn't need much post-processing, but here's what I did. Obviously, I took away the plug sockets with a bit of healing and cloning, and then I felt the colors as they came off the camera were just a little bit too strong, so I reduced the vibrance slightly to taste. The white walls of my studio, I'd still like some texture in there. So I found a photograph of my old studio wall. I put that over the top, blended it together with the soft light blending mode, and dropped the opacity to 50%. 
So that's the basic setup for getting tone in a high key wall. All we need to do now is take some great photos. So Chloe, are you ready? Okay, let's grab the camera and take some shots. Here we go. temptation is just to leave your model and your lights where you started but if you do that you're going to miss out on a whole bunch of shots so all I asked Chloe to do was to crouch down and we get a very different look and feel to the pictures but remember if you're going to move your model you do need to move your lights This time I've changed things around a little bit. We're not against the white wall. We now have more of a, a low key, darker environment, but I still wanna get that nice warm tone in the pictures. Now this in theory should be a little bit easier because where do you see the warm tones? You see it in the shadows. And what have we got on a low key situation? A lot of shadows. So my approach is slightly different. First of all, let's work out the exposure. We're shooting at F5.6, remember? I'm just going to take a meter reading and see what we get. Here we go. And I'm getting, that's a stroke of luck, 5.6 exactly. And this time, that's exactly what I want because I want to expose for the highlights so I don't burn them out. Done that. But I also want to keep the shadows in this shot. So I'm not going to deliberately underexpose because that would make my shadows even darker. I don't need to do that. So let's see how it looks with just the key light on its own. Okay, Chloe, here we go. This is always gonna be a vertical shot to fit into this format. And it looks really good. We have some lovely tone in there. If you wanted a rich, contrasty image, well, I've got that. But in this case, I wanna open up those shadows again with a little bit of a fill light. For the fill light, it's the same Flashpoint Explore 300. I'm gonna put it up nice and high, bounce it off the ceiling of my studio. How bright should this be? Well, I'm gonna go for the same minus two stops, two stops underexposed. Let's see what we're getting. Yeah, F2.8, two stops underexposed. Now, if you don't have a flash meter to do that, you can do it by trial and error. And there is a degree of take a picture and review, see what you think. But this is what it looks like, just the fill light on its own. And what I get is a picture that's fairly flat, fairly underexposed, and exactly the look I'm going for. And when we combine it with the key light, it looks like this. For this setup, I actually did less Photoshop work than the first lighting setup, but the effect is a lot more apparent and perhaps a little bit more necessary. So inside of Adobe Camera Raw, I went to the curves option and found the point curve. Then I could take the left hand slider and move it up a little bit. That is the, the blacks, the really deep shadows. And if you take it up to a 15 to 20, it just removes those from the image and gives it much more mid tones and the style and look that I'm going for. So that's my basic settings for the warm look with a darker low key background. I think it's time to take a few shots like this. Chloe, are you ready? Okay, let's see what we get. it's not just the lighting and the post-processing that's going to create that warm feel there's also the styling and everything I'm using in these photos has a natural warm tone to it The flat look is a really good look to master because if you can master flat, you can definitely master contrasty. And of course, it doesn't have to be warm either. You can take exactly the same idea and make it a cold tone portrait. Warm fitted in with my styling and of course with Chloe's look. Now, if you've enjoyed this video or you've got any questions, leave me a comment down below. Click on the bell icon and you'll never miss a video right here on Adorama TV. And we have new videos pretty much every single day. And of course, remember to click on that subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.